Hey y'all, it's Ange from They Keep Bees. Uh, so we are going to continue on our queenless journey and we're going to take a look at what's called a walk away split. Something that we keep, we do here at They Keep Bees are walk away splits. We're actually in the process of trialing some walk away splits with a friend of ours. This walk away split was made by taking bees, brood, and nectar from a big strong hive bring it to a new location and allowing it to raise its own queen. We made this walkaway split very strong. We took, shook two frames of bees into this on top of the four frames we put in, which had um, capped and open brood and nectar. We're gonna check on it and see that it's raising queen. Probably should take it out of this cardboard box too. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that you notice here is that the hive is strong. There's a lot of bees in it, okay? If you look here at the bottom, you can see there are bees just starting to beard. It's very hot today. If you look in here, between the frames, see little heads poking out in four out of five of the frames. We say to make these hives strong, and I'll show you what that looks like frame by frame. But you're always going to have some drift away from queenless hives and towards queen right hives, meaning bees will leave this hive and they'll go to hives that have a queen, a mated queen, because they can smell that queen pheromone and they're attracted to it. So until their queen has emerged and is mated, you'll always have this natural drift. But you don't want to lose all the bees in your hive. So when we put these in, we put them in with a blank frame and this one is starting to get drawn out with new wax. It had some foundational wax at first, but you can see new wax being chewed into shape in a few different spots. I'm gonna put that aside. So that's one sort of blank frame for us, but it's covered in bees already who are starting to work it. Here we have capped brood and pollen, nectar, more capped, whoops, and on the other side we have more capped and emerging brood as well as tons of food resources. So this is a really good food frame as well as emerging brood that's emerging and then getting filled up with resources because it's on the outer edge of this box. Next frame, remember this is a queenless hive. Woo, more pollen, some honey up at the top here. Pollen in the center, lots of young bees. You can tell young bees because they're quite fuzzy. And more nectar. So this hive has been queenless for about 10 days. A lot of their brood has emerged. We should find a hatched queen cell in here on one of these brood frames. Ah, here we go. So this is another brood frame, mostly emerged. There's still some capped brood on this side. And there's some chewed down queen cells, which tells me a queen emerged some point recently. Here is a live queen cell. We're gonna leave that for now. Ah, and right here we have two queen cells that look as if they've emerged and the bees are now tearing them down. Even three. Another one that's been torn down from the side. Another one that's been torn down from the side. So a queen definitely emerged. Queens will emerge and after a few hours, once their bodies harden off, they'll begin um, battling each other until there's one queen left in the hive. Sometimes though the virgins can um, there could be multiple virgins in a hive at one time. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. Taking a quick peek to see if we can see any virgin queens right now. But again, what you're seeing on here is brood that's emerging, brood that's capped, lots of young healthy bees, and those are the bees that are going to be able to raise a good strong queen for you and feed her well, as long as there's lots of resource in the hive, and you've shaken in some bees who can act as your foragers.
is a strong walk away split. And what I would say about this hive, why we're doing this again, we wanted to give a brood break to a large, robust, healthy hive. We wanted to have that queen. The bees from that hive raise a daughter queen because we liked how they were performing. And so we split them into several of these walk away splits. This mimics a swarm. A swarm is how bees, whoops, almost forgot that last frame. A uh, swarm is how bees reproduce. Half of the hive leaves with the old mated queen, taking her to a new location where they set up a new hive. They leave behind the young bees, all the resources, plenty of food, and a few very young larvae and eggs so that the bees can raise their own queen. That queen then goes out and mates, and the daughter hive now has all those resources to continue to propagate brood and has had a nice healthy brood break so there's no varroa mating inside of the capped brood because it'll all have emerged mm -hmm. by the time my um, virgin queen has gone off to mate. So they like this method. It's a good way to propagate bees that you like or enjoy working with. It is a good way to give a brood break to a large hive. And if it fails, you can always recombine the hives and you still have the original queen. The nice part about walkaway splits is you can make one really strong one, like the one that we saw earlier, or you can make several small ones like this using all the resources in a hive. So you could propagate one queen or several queens all at once using the walkaway split method, as long as you have enough bees. Ah. Right now, they keep bees and Anarchy Apiaries is researching all these ways to make walkaway splits. We are trying to make walkaway splits and leave the bees in place walkway splits and carry the bees away, um, and walkway splits and confine. And we're hoping to have some data soon about what the best ways um, to make walkway splits mm -hmm. are. So we can start honing in on recipes for maximizing those really strong hives that you have and you want to propagate. And this way, you end up being able to have a regenerative apiary working with the types of bees that are adapted to your bioregion. So that's our goal. Thanks for watching. Bye.